Hey, have you ever attempted to draw, attempted to draw water, buckets full of water um, from a stream? Now, you will notice that when you, when the bucket is fully immersed in, in a body of water, let's say well or stream, it appears lighter, but you draw it more and more happens close to yourself you notice that it becomes heavier and heavier as it leaves the stream or the well you know in this part of the world there's a lot of well you come across when there is shortage of water right now actually it appeared heaviest when completely out of the stream it's a common experience it's a common experience so what happens now this, does this not suggest the fact that there is some upward force exerted by the liquid on anything that is immersed in it? Yes, that's obviously what we can conjecture from there. There is this apparent loss in weight of such objects due to the upward force possessed by that liquid. Now, that's why if the true weight, if you want to measure an object, you don't measure it maybe down the, the, or inside the body of water. The reason is because it's not showing the true wave. And the upward force, this upward force is called what? An uptrust. Now, before we go talking about uptrust, I, I think our main heading, I, I like to touch a bit of it when it talks about equilibrium. Now, the body said to be in equilibrium when basically to, to lemma is balanced. Or in science, we say body body said to be in equilibrium. I mean, in physics now, when it's acted upon by different forces and does not cause it to rotate or move, right? That means it is still balanced. There are different forces acting on it. For example, let's say this is a beam. This is a beam. I have a force here. I have another force here. Another one here, and it does not move or rotate about a point we call this system we can say that this system is in equilibrium so we've talked answered what is equilibrium is a system of, of forces which are equal the resultant in which the resultant uh, in which uh, the system of forces i can repeat uh, i like to repeat the system of forces and a body said to be in equilibrium such that the resultant of these forces is zero. So upward uptrust, I already talked about it. I said the appearance, that force that tends to, to make the um, um, the weight of that water, like I gave in scenario, lesser than it ought to be or than it is when the water is lifted up from the well. So in this case, we can say that uptrust or uptrust is equal to the difference in weight. So we can call it weight in air minus weight in what? Fluid. Some people some people call it liquid, but it's essentially the same thing. Weight in air minus weight in fluid. So that's all when you hear the word uptrust. However, there are many um, formulas to this when you're dealing with uptrust. I'm going to explain them, attempt to explain them as we go on and break down so we can understand. Now, what are the factors that affect the value of the uptrust? Because um, a lot of time, in some exam, they will have to ask you which of the following does not affect or does affect the value of the uptrust. The value of the uptrust is dependent on two important things so far that I know. First of all, it's dependent on the volume of the solid in mass. So I can have, can I extend this? Okay, so I have the volume. The solid immersed volume of solid immersed. So, part of my right, I'm trying to save space. Then, um, the volume of the solid immersed, then uh, quickly, and the density of the liquid. I'm trying to, yes, density of the liquid that's my key critical thing. Density of the liquid, I'm trying to recall very well because, um, if you watch the density of the liquid, determines. How well the apparent force is going to act on it. Okay, so uptrust, volume of the solid in mass, and density of the liquids. 
Oh, that brings us to the next thing we we'll talk about, which is flotation. Now, um, someone asked me, a student of mine was asked me and said, um, "Sir, why is it that? How come when you put a cock, I mean a cock from you know, the dead, um, or the cover of a wine, floats in water easily, or if you put it on a stream, it's going to flow easily, or if you push put a stone, it's going to sink." He asked a very wonderful, good, nice question. Truth is that uh, there is a principle to flotation. Not everything floats. Now, that leads us to um, the principle of flotation in physics. Now, a body can float. Hmm? A body can float, float, or flotation rather takes place when the up thrust is equal to the weight. Now, let's assume this is a body. Okay, this is a body of water. Uh, this is now uh, there's the weight of the body is going to add downwards. The up thrust, like we explained earlier, is going to up, up upwards. Now, when the the reaction equals the weight, then the body starts to float. Now, for that cock, when the weight is less than the up thrust or equal to, what happens is that it floats. But by the time the weight is more like and the surface area is actually smaller, like the area of um, like the the weight of a stone is definitely going to be heavy. It's only going to sink compared to the volume or compared to the area as it were. So this is our key things we are talking about the principle of flotation. Now we're going to look at some calculations to help us understand this concept. Because during the points during calculation, I'm going to show you some formulas that can be derived. From this simple explanation I've made. Alright, so uh, let's go straight to calculations. I think that's what's next now. So we can see a very basic example of playing with um, of trust. Very basic before we start real stuff. It says an object weighs 10 newtons in air and 7 newtons in water. Calculate the value of the of trust. I, I said earlier that. Um, Different in the weight of in air and that of water, and that in water, sorry, will determine the value of the up thrust, and that is weight up thrust equals the weight in air minus weight in fluid. So I'm going to have here. I'm going to have weight in air, of course. You can see weight in fluid. What's the weight in air here? Ten newton. So I have ten newton. Ten. I'm just save the magnitude minus 7 which is equal to 3 new 10 so the way you calculate the value of the options it's 3 new 10 pretty straightforward so let's get to other uh, related or simple questions and let's see this first question it says an object is hung is hung from a spring balance 15 new 10 in air and 30 newton when immersed in water calculate the weight of the water displaced number two says calculate the up thrust three mass of the displaced water four density of sorry volume of the displaced water five volume and mass of the object and six says find the relative density the seventh one says the density of the object. Now, one one fascinating thing, reason why I picked this question was that it had most concept I, mean, I was trying to put together, and then I decided to pick this online. It's a very critical but yet important question. But if you pay attention to everything we're solving here, I'm sure that uh, you may just need to do a little bit of study, and then you're problem of um, equilibrium or Archimedes principle is going to be faced. Now, one major um, rule or factor when we are solving problems on bodies or equilibrium of bodies in liquids is Archimedes principle. Now, what does the principle say? It says that when a body is partially or wholly immersed in a liquid, Right? It experiences an up thrust 
which is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. I repeat that the critical word there and it says when the body is partially or wholly immersed in a fluid, liquid especially, it experiences an upthrust which is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. That means upthrust is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. Alright? So now let's get to business. The first one says the weight of the water displaced. Now Obviously, when you say the weight, like I said, from our from um, um, achievement this principle, we discover that, or we already said, or established that weight, weight, weight of displaced fluid is equal to the uptrust. So I'm uh, answering question one now. Uh, take my graphics. Okay, I'm answering question one now. This is question one for space. Okay, so weight of displaced fluid is equal to the uptrust. Now, weight of displaced fluid, it's uh, we have it as the uptrust. Can we find the uptrust? Remember, I said uptrust from that um, elementary question we did is equal to weight in air minus weight in fluid is equal to if you look at the question from here we discover that 50 newton in air and 30 newton when immersed in water so i'm going to have something like 50 minus 30 which is equal to 20 newton so the weight of the fluid displaced is 20 newton the same time this question is repeated, but in a more logical sense, it says the uptrust. We already saw that. So weight and uptrust, weight of the displaced fluid is equal to the uptrust. So this question has already helped me to answer question two. You can say from Archimedes principle, from Archimedes, pen, sorry, from Archimedes principle, from Archimedes a principle we can say that weight we can say that weight weight of displaced fluid displaced fluid oh my god I'm trying to save space is equal to the uptrust uptrust oh it's operating itself it's equal to the uptrust now oh. Um, the next one, which is mass of the displaced water. I already know the weight of displaced water. Okay. Our weight is equal to mass times gravity. Now, since I know the weight, which is 10, 10 newton. 10, okay, 20, sorry. 20 newton is equal to the mass, which is one. I don't know, times acceleration to gravity, which is normally 10 meter per second. So if you divide both sides by 10, my mass is equal to 20 over 10, which is which is equal to sorry, 2 2 what is going to be kilogram because the unit for um, unit for mass is in kilogram. Or well, however, if you want to put it in gram, it's going to be 2,000 grams. Why? Because um, one kilogram is a thousand. Thousand grams, so two kilogram means two thousand gram. Now off we are to the next question. Next question wants us to determine the um, it says number four. It says determine the volume of displaced water. Now in our basic physics knowledge, we know that density is equal to mass over volume. Now here the knowledge of um, specific value for density is going to be helpful here. And the density of water in terms of grand per cm cube, we call we call that density of water is equal to one gram per cm cube. I already know. Okay, I'm asked to find the volume. I already know the mass from here. Okay, so I just need to volume from here make volume. So get a formula. 
it's going to be v volume is equal to um what's the mass volume is will be equal to the mass divided by the density now obviously the mass is two gram two thousand gram over can put that gram over density is one density is one gram per cm cube which is one gram um, times cm cube so here is going to go that will give me two thousand cm cube cube so that have an answer let's go to question five question five so still on the question um you want to determine the volume and mass of the object and wait in this is going to help us out relative density because um first of all from the parameters given we are limited as to what to get the volume and mass of the object so weight in uh, we're going to use the relative density which is weight in air over our trust the same relative density is also equal to density of object over density of water please take note of this formula if you can remember this i think um, you can derive much other formulas from this place so having a knowledge of this will help so let's go we want to um, determine the the um, point question five volume and mass of the object i already know my weight here what's my weight here which is 50 over What's my uptrust? Uptrust we calculated to be 20 is equal to density of objects. That's what we are looking for, right? We do not have it. So uh, we can get as um, density of object. Can I call it density not over and density of water? Density of water, we already said now, is, is 1 gram per cm cube. So if you cross multiply, if you cross multiply, you're going to have something like um density not is equal to 50 times 1 over 20. this can remove this i have 2.5 remember it's going to be in gram per cm cube this is the density of the substance or density of the object that we're talking about now but recall we are looking for the mass and not density or Getting density helps us because remember that mass, the mass will be equal to volume times, sorry, I didn't spell this very well, but ushering this can waste a lot of my time. So volume times the density, which is equal to 2.5, which is the density times, what's the volume, volume, volume. So we need, we need to get the volume, which is pretty much straightforward. From here, you can see that um, volume of the object is equal to the volume of the liquid displaced. Now, we already found that the volume is of this liquid is a um, 2,000, I think 2,000 gram from our calculation. So, we can simply put that into 2,000. Okay. Now, if you multiply this times 2, that's 5. Triple. So, that's 5,000. It's going to be mass of the object or mass of this is going to be 5000 grams just simply put that 5000 g tips your love now now volume of the object is equal to the volume of displaced water that's how how come we're using this volume that we got from here this next to of that because it's part of the um understanding that you need to have before carrying out any calculation then the sixth one quickly because we're running out of time now, relative density, it says you find the relative density of the object, obviously. Now, relative density, um, it's normally equals to weight in air, like we said, up trust over weight, uh, weight in air, I mean to say over up trust. Same relative density, we can also say the density of substance over density of water, which is this part we calculated. Now, weight in air, it's 50. That's all we want to do, use that. Any of them is able to give you the same answer. Uptrust, we got it as, um, as 20. I remember very well for a wrist. So that gives me 50 by by 20. This goes, that will give me 2.5. 2.5. Now, 2.5, that will be our relative density. The last one, which is 7, it says density 
of substance. We already determined that I think here, in terms of in the process of trying to get our mass here, so here, so um, which is here again, which is so we're going to have density of substance, density of object or substance is equal to two point two point five yes two point five two point five gram per cm cube. Thank you guys. Um, I think with this you have had a fair grasp of dealing with problem as relates to um, equilibrium of bodies in fluids. Now for more problem, more questions, you can drop a comment below. I will answer them. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and please do well to share with your friends, families, members, and people who you know probably have issues and they want to learn platforms that you stand up. This is going to be helpful. Be a brother. Bye for now. See you soon.